the, the theme for the, for the day was really about where do we find insights. And actually, this is the area that I'm particularly interested in. In fact, I'm passionate about. And particularly when we have the conversation like we've had this morning about how fast everything's growing and how technology is changing so quickly, actually, I think what is very interesting for us is we kind of find ourselves challenged. And I think one of those challenges is when I start to think about insights, I start to think actually not just about where I find them, but where I don't find them. So, for example, you'd have seen all the headlines this year, this week, or last week about you know, Apple launching its latest you know, smartwatch, you know, wearable technology. And actually, when we look at Kenny Baker in the Star Wars film in 1977, wearable technology was happening then because he was wearing his R2-D2 outfit. So actually, what we need to do is when we think about the consumer is we need to make sure we're not distracted by all of this new technology, all of the new kind of data that we have at our hands, and actually start to understand people. And here's a chap called Bob Hoffman. He writes a blog called The Ad Contrarian, and I think it's a really interesting blog. It sounds a lot like Brian's blog, actually, the, the cynical old git, because he's a real cynical old git. The only difference is he's American, and he comes from a creative agency background. But if you read his blog, and I, and I really recommend you follow it, he often says some things that are really profound, and I think this is one that, I, that really resonates with me, actually, is you know, there's no bigger sucker than a marketeer who just follows a trend, and actually I put it in there, um, ad man. And actually what that means for us is let's not just jump on the latest bandwagon, because actually as an industry we are obsessed by the new new, the latest shiny thing. Actually there's another way to think about it. Um, so where do insights come from? And here's just a little story about um, how there's a study that I do called WAVE, which we do across the world. And, and this is really the genesis of that project and actually how, how it came to be. Um, there's a guy called John Ronson, who's a documentary filmmaker. I don't know if any of you know him. He's written a book called The Men at Stare at Goats. His latest book is about do um, psychopaths make the best CEOs? Um, if you don't have time to read it, I think the answer is yes, they do, <laughs> certainly from my own perspective. But he did a documentary talking about um, people and, and kind of how they connect with people. And one of the stories he had was about a website called Anand Tech. Now, Anand Tech is still going. It's a forum. It's kind of where geeks and technologists get together to talk. And this is, this is a story from way back before Google, you know, way back before Facebook. And actually, there's a guy who joins this forum. And he joins the forum, and actually, what he finds is immediately, he is hated. Everybody on the forum hates him. They hate the way he speaks, they hate his opinions, the, the way he talks, everything. So actually, what he does is he invents a female character to join this kind of very male-orientated uh, forum. And his idea is, I will get people to like me, actually, by creating a connection between me and this, this fictitious female character. So he does that. So then every time he blogs, every time he posts, she responds really positively towards him. And actually what he starts to see is people start to respond to him saying, hey, I think this girl really likes you. you know, I think you've got a real connection between the two of you. And so then they start building up this relationship within this forum. And actually, the whole forum becomes invested in this growing, completely fictitious relationship. And actually, what I got out of that was actually that when we think about online, and when we think about online behavior, and I think when we think about social media behavior in particular, we think it's actually a very, um, a very superficial world. It's a world where people just put the best of them out there, and certainly this guy was doing that. But actually what it said to me was, actually this behavior is all about love. It's all about respect, it's all about emotion. Even though all these things were happening on the website, and all these people were communicating with each other, and there's a lot of kind of um, fiction going on, it was still those really strong emotions uh, of love and affection. And actually, that's what these people were looking for. They were connecting with each other. And actually, they were, they were actually looking for something in this space. So actually, it's not a superficial space at all. And actually, it was a rather 
sad ending to the to the for, uh, to the story because he actually everybody came so invested in this relationship. He ended up saying, actually, do you know what? I'm going to go out and meet her. We're going to get married. She's the you know the woman of my life. And then he got he got scared and decided the only way he could he could end this whole thing is by pretending that this, he when he went out to see her that actually she'd been in a car accident and then she'd died in this car accident. So he sent this horrible post out. And then the whole forum was absolutely brokenhearted. And in fact, the only reason he got found out was because somebody created an online um, kind of tribute website to this girl. But the picture, the avatar he'd used was of an adult film actress. And someone recognized this girl and actually caught him out. What I think is, it's a tre tremendously sad story, but it's all true human emotion that sits within it. And actually, if you, if you check out the Ron Johnson, he can tell you the full story. But actually what it means to me is, when we think about online, and when we think about, you know, we come into a room like this, the first thing we ask is, can I have the Wi-Fi code? And that's because our emotions are now intimately connected with the online space. We can't quite relax until we're able to express ourselves online uh, or, or uh, uh, find out things around us by having that intimate connection. So actually, this internet con in intimate connection to the online space is now a fundamental part of our human being. And what I think for us is that becomes an opportunity to understand people. So it's not about you know, the latest uh, social app. It's not about the latest technology. It's about understanding people. And the great thing is, when we start looking into this space, we can start understanding them. And we don't understand them by their behavior. And this is a great quote from David Ogilvy, who says, you know, people don't uh, think how they feel, they don't say what they think, and they don't do what they say. But actually, by thinking about this whole environment in a very different way, we can start to understand people. And we've been running the WAVE study now for seven years. We do it in over 70 countries, we've talked to something like 300,000 people. And actually, we've seen so many trends. We've seen the rise of mobile, we've seen the rise of Facebook, we've seen the rise of all the social networks, and all the kind of LinkedIn, social, professional social networks as well. And actually, all of those trends are the least interesting thing that I can tell you about what we've learned. Because actually, what we've learned is not what the behaviors are, but what's driving them. Why are, are so many people going online? Why are these social networks growing so quickly? Why is the sheer scale and pace of that growing so fast? It's growing so fast because they're the basic human fundamental drivers that we've always had are the things that are driving them. And actually, we've seen that there are five key drivers. One of them is about building relationships. I mean, that's exactly what was going on in those forums. Some of it was about recognition, wanting respect from your peers. Sometimes it's just about progression, you know, learning new things and, um, uh, and, and moving on in the world, or, or it's simply about learning. So actually what we're able to do is when we look in this world of technology and it seems so complex and it seems so difficult to navigate, actually we can break all of that down by thinking about the consumer first. Why are they there? Not thinking about the behavior, but why they're doing it. And I think the other thing about this is not just about how do you find insights, but actually how do you know when you found them? And for me, in my career, I've always realized that I found a great insight when it made sense of the world, when suddenly it wasn't necessarily a great big revelation, but actually explained lots of things to me. It told me why things were happening. And actually, when I look at, think about those five needs, and I look at them across the world, and I look at, sorry, this is very small, you probably can't see it, but when I look at different countries and understand you know, which countries are a learning country, well, China's a learning country. Um, Egypt's a learning country. Saudi Arabia's a learning country. And that's because they don't have access to free flow of information. So that's the real demand for them. One for me that is always familiar to me as someone who visits um, Russia a lot on business is that in Russia, it's about self-promotion. You know, it really is about, for them, acting in the on online space and actually in the offline space too, recognition of other people is a really strong driver for them. So actually what we're able to do is strip away all that complexity and just start thinking about the consumer first and what it is that drives them. And actually this becomes the starting point for us when we think about 
How do we connect with consumers? What is it that they actually want? And I think the reason why this is really important for us um, as a business is those drivers are the, are the key drivers that drive relationships with brands. And actually, those are the things that are changing more quickly. Those five fundamental needs are the needs that we've had forever. The things that's changing is the technology around it and that, uh, the ability of advertisers to help deliver on those needs. And as we all know, you know, a brand that can be about more than just a product, but actually can stand for something, has far more value to consumers and far more value financially. So um, I'll leave you with one more point, which is you know, the next time you're having dinner and your friends Instagramming your meal, you know, try not to punch them, but actually just think not about the behavior, but the motivation. Thank you.